Thank you for downloading this episode of a History of Central Florida podcast. This is the podcast where we explore Central Florida's history through the artifacts found in local area museums and historical societies. This series is brought to you by Riches, the regional initiative to collect the histories, experiences, and stories of Central Florida, and the Orange County Regional History Center. I am Kendra Hazen, and I will be your host for today's episode titled, Print Culture. Media is an integral part of our everyday lives. The introduction of the printing press in the 15th century didn't create a new media in the form of words on paper. What it did was make the production of books, flyers, and other materials available for a mass audience to consume. From that point, someone's idea or argument could flow from the page to the printer to a mass audience quicker than ever before. With the advent of the printing press, a new form of media communication was invented, the newspaper. The newspaper as a media had its start in Germany in the beginning of the 17th century. The newspaper was a mass-produced serial publication that was meant to inform and engage a local population. In this episode, we feature objects from two newspaper offices in Central Florida. The first dates to the 1880s and was a Gordon letter press, or commonly known as a platen press, used by the new Smyrna Breeze in their newspaper offices. The second is a hot lead printing plate used by the Sanford Herald through most of the 20th century. The early printing press was used in a setting known as a jobbing shop. Since New Smyrna was not a town with a large circulation, the editors of the New Smyrna Breeze could not depend solely on circulation for revenue. Thus, this smaller press you see on display at the New Smyrna Museum of History could not have printed newspaper-sized materials and instead would have been used for small jobs. The multiple jobs a printing office could perform would give the operation its nickname as a jobbing shop. Dr. Haven Hawley from the University of Florida tells us why these jobbing shops were important to small communities like New Smyrna. Many newspaper shops would have a variety of presses because you could be called upon to do smaller sheets as well as larger sheets. But the real problem that they faced was you had to maximize how much printing went through each of these presses in order to get your money back. You don't want to have a press idle. That's money being wasted. So they would have had to carefully figure out what press would be needed for each of the types of printing that would be part of their business strategy. And again, this would be very easy for inserts, for flyers. You want to publicize a local event. A salesman comes through town. They would want to have calling cards set up, perhaps they might want to have some stationery. These are all things that a press like this could, could produce. What you are seeing here is a platen press in operation, similar to the one in the new Smyrna Museum. Notice each page must be manually printed by an operator, and the plate can be changed out for a new job. Here, Dr. Hawley reminds us how central the printing press was to the development of American public life before the 19th century. Now the Gordon presses and these platen presses also were especially popular in the 1870s and 1880s, which was about 100 years after the United States was formed. So they have a, an association in people's mind with an independent printer. If you think of Benjamin Franklin and, and how the printing press has played a big role in American life, you can get an appreciation for how each person who has one of these presses can feel like they're the root of democracy. They're the root of being right with the people in their town, very direct service. So you have a whole cultural construct that moves along with these printing presses. John Y. Detweiler was the founder and editor of the New Smyrna Breeze. In the late 19th century, he was a community leader, and his paper took on a mission to inform and mold public opinion, which came during a time when the role of editor in newspaper was transitioning in American society. Dr. Kimberly Voss from the University of Central Florida tells us how this new journalism era changed the role of the newspaper for the community it covered. 
interestingly enough, the 1880s to the 1900s, on in large part, it's called new journalism, which sounds very interesting today because we think things are new. But at that time, there really was this idea of it becoming a profession. You could almost see an editor at previous years, it's almost like his personal newsletter, right? I mean, his, his opinions, what he cared about, um, it was very much personality driven. We saw the beginning of the professionalization of it when we saw a separation from the editorial side and the reporting, um, when suddenly you had to do with advertisers, um, when it was less of a subscription-based concept, and it really did become much more professional. We saw the beginning of professional organizations coming up in both advertising and in journalism at that time, and so you did see less of the editor's voice uh, beginning about that time. The newspaper was everything to the residents of that community. Uh, they had no other source of mass information particularly from a local standpoint. There were magazines at that time, but we didn't have radio yet. Um, you didn't have the newsreels that would be at the beginning of a motion picture. So you really relied on your newspaper for all information. I think there would be quite a bit of panic if the newspaper didn't come out. In large part, this was a way of connecting to the larger community. You know, this is their way of finding out um, big political issues, um, economic news, uh, international conflicts, those kinds of things. And so without that, you were closed off from the outside world without your newspaper. The Rotary Press, which was used in large-scale newspaper operations, had a plate wrapped around the cylinder and did away with the individual pieces of type that the Platten Press utilized. The Sanford Museum has on display one cylindrical hot lead printing plate. Unlike the new Smyrna Breeze, the Sanford Herald during the middle of the 20th century would have been a dedicated shop to publishing a daily newspaper and not a jobbing shop. Dr. Holly tells us how these rotary presses would have been operated. The press that would have printed from this curved printing press or a cylindrical printing press would have been a rotary press. And a rotary press has a plate that is wrapped around a cylinder. Now, that wouldn't have worked at all. In fact, it didn't work very well at all when you had individual pieces of type, as in much of the 19th century. But you did have rotary presses being uh, produced commercially and, and quite successfully by the mid-19th century. The single biggest advantage of a rotary press is that you do not have to stop the movement of the plate and the paper meeting together. You can have a continuous movement. The labor process that was, that was used and that was actually going out at the time was using linotype or hot lead type setting to set lines of type. Each of those lines of type would be fashioned into a type of mat from which you could cast a single roll plate. And this plate would fit onto a printing cylinder on the machine, but it, it also allowed you to have that continuous process. Um, you can see that you also have photographs, and those are half tones. So you, everything looks backwards, as it would, because you have to have it backwards in order to have it right reading when it's completely printed. At the end of production, the metal cylinder would be melted down and reused the next day. By the 1980s, like many other sections of the American economy, newspaper production became more automated. Digital innovations and computer technology made the rotary press obsolete. Dr. Hawley describes this process to us. Um, during the 1980s in particular, you had a change in the labor processes in part, and I would say uh, it was related to uh, very much the business strategies of the publishers. Because working these large presses required you to have a very well-trained labor force. And this, uh, the unionization patterns were something that many publishers felt held them back. Many publishers were starting to try to think of ways to change the labor process so that they could reduce the labor costs and to integrate new technologies that would give them more flexibility in printing. Especially in the 1980s, we see computer processes coming in. Many people thought that rotary presses were on their way out but new technologies using plastic for raised printing were developed, which allowed you to have a round plate as well. Other types of processes continued 
after the rotary presses. Um, offset lithography, for instance, is very popular for large press runs. You can have 100,000, hundreds of thousands even, images produced through offset lithography. Since the 1500s, the world the printing press helped to create has been subject to new technologies and innovations. Throughout the 19th and 20th centuries, the newspaper offices and print shops have required fewer workers, and we sit at the dawn of a new electronic information age where the internet makes information easy to access while our local communities have been subsumed by the global reach of the World Wide Web. Dr. Holly leaves us with her impressions of where the news and newspapers are headed into the 21st century. I think that at this point we're still doing things online that are fairly similar to what we're, we would do with a newspaper. We're still looking up information. We're still tr asking that that information be clustered, perhaps ordered in some area of importance. These are all things that different sections of the newspaper have done for us. The editors helped us to understand what was most important. They put it on the front page and they put it above the fold of the front page. Google happens to rank things, so whatever's on the first page of the Google ranking is something that you're going to pay attention to. These are similar ways of behaving, similar ways of experiencing information and seeking out information. Um, and then I guess finally I would say there, there are going to be some very serious effects upon our economy and upon how we view things socially. Um, the access and the PowerPoints that were part of the print world are changing. And at this point, people in the newspaper business have to have their feet in both worlds. You cannot have only digital and you cannot have only print. You have to do both of them because people aren't quite ready for only digital. But the people who are really going to survive are the ones who can leapfrog into that new affective computing future. We hope you have enjoyed this episode of A History of Central Florida podcast. For more information about the items featured in this episode, visit the New Smyrna Museum of History at 120 Sam's Avenue in New Smyrna Beach, Florida, and the Sanford Museum at 520 East 1st Street in Sanford, Florida. And make sure to join us for our next episode titled Travel Dining. <music>